This is part three of the chapter 10 lecture notes. Um, we had, uh, we covered prophase um, and prometaphase of the um, mitosis uh, stage of the cell cycle. So now we are at metaphase. And the only thing that happens in metaphase is that the chromosomes simply line up in the middle along the metaphase plate. And the sister chromatids remain attached by cohesion proteins. And actually, um, that is a misspell. Cohesin. Um, C-O-H-E-S-I-N, cohesin proteins. Okay, anaphase. The sister chromatids separate, the cohesin proteins degenerate, and so the sister chromatids separate, move to opposite poles or opposite ends of the cell, and the cell begins to elongate, but what it will not do is it will not start to form the indention or the cleavage furrow. You won't see any forming of a cleavage furrow or a cell plate. So that's how you can tell the difference under the microscope of anaphase and telophase is because sometimes the, the, the phases look very similar under the microscope. So anaphase, um, if it's anaphase, the cell will not have started um, cytokinesis yet. So if it's an animal cell, it will not have formed a cleavage furrow, and if it's a plant cell, it will not have formed a cell plate. Now in telophase, if it's truly in telophase, you will actually see the indention, the little cleavage furrow already starting to form. Um, that's to me a mistake in the illustration. I'm not the artist, and I'm certainly no expert, but I think um, the way I've always learned it and taught it is that during telophase, cytokinesis begins. So um, we should be seeing a cleavage furrow at the same time um, as this phase is going on. But anyway, I won't get too picky. Um, you will start to see all of the things that happened in prophase. The reverse of those things will happen. So the chromosomes will begin to decondense and form back into chromatin. The spindle uh, fibers will um, kind of dissolve. It says they will depolymerize. In other words, they will break down into smaller fibers um, that aren't as noticeable under the microscope. And then nuclear envelopes will reform around the chromosomes. So these are things that are going to happen in telophase. And then here is an illustration of cytokinesis in animal cells versus cytokinesis in plant cells. Here in an animal cell, you can see a cleavage furrow or, or an indention between the two cells um, occurs and a ring, a contractile ring forms in the middle and just causes, it's kind of like this ring that just gets smaller and smaller and smaller and it just causes the cell to split. So in animal cells, you're gonna see the presence of a cleavage furrow and the cells are gonna literally split in half. In plant cells, you're gonna see the formation of a cell plate and that cell plate is formed by vesicles that are pinched off from the Golgi apparatus. So that's why you see Golgi vesicles here. Golgi vesicles actually form that cell plate. And then eventually the cell plate will develop into the cell wall and you will have two separate plant cells. Now, um, the cell cycle needs to be regulated. It's a process that um, we need for cell, cells to divide, but we don't need them to divide um, at the wrong time or too often. So um, regulation of the cell cycle, and, and another thing is, is this, um, there are mutations. There are problems sometimes, and we don't want that cell to actually complete cell division. So um, the new cell must be a duplicate of the original parent cell. In fact, the two new cells, 
must be an exact copy. So here's your parent cell in humans that contains 46 chromosomes. And when it divides into the two daughter cells, they need to be identical copies of the parent cell. They need to have 46 identical chromosomes. Um, they just need to be identical copies of the parent cell. So any mistakes that happen, um, such as the chromosomes have mutated or the chromosome number is not correct, um, maybe one of them has two extra chromosomes and one has too few chromosomes, like one of the daughter cells has 48 and the other daughter cell has 44. Um, things like that, when there are mutations in the chromosomes, um, we kind of want uh, cell, the uh, cell cycle to stop. So there are three checkpoints, internal checkpoints, that regulate the cell cycle. There's a G1, a G2, and then an M checkpoint. External triggers can initiate or inhibit the cell cycle, and these ex external triggers can be the death of nearby cells. Maybe there's a virus that's killing off nearby cells. The release of growth hormones can initiate the cell cycle. Death of nearby cells can um, sometimes initiate, sometimes inhibit the cell cycle. Cell crowding will inhibit the cell cycle. I forget what that's called. That has a name. Um, but basically, um, it's, it's uh, I know what it is. It's contact inhibition. Contact inhibition. And this is important because we're going to talk about cancer in this chapter. And cancer cells have no contact inhibition. Um, just because they're crowded, they'll still keep growing. So um, there, there are external triggers and there are also internal factors that can regulate the cell cycle. The G1 checkpoint determines whether all conditions are favorable for cell division. So um, it's, the G1 checkpoint is looking for things like um, adequate cell reserves, meaning nutrients, um, lipids and carbohydrates and proteins adequate cell size, there's a check for DNA damage, and when the cell does not meet all the requirements, it will not proceed on to the S phase. And there are two options if the conditions aren't met, either stop the cycle and try to fix the problem, or enter G0 and wait for signs that conditions are better, so enter like a dormant state. The G2 checkpoint prevents entry into the mitotic phase, so it pre prevents um, mitosis from proceeding. Um, the cell size and protein reserves are checked again. Make sure there are enough of the various types of protein. The size of the cell is appropriate. The most important role of the G G2 checkpoint is to ensure that all chromosomes have been replicated and that the replicated DNA is not damaged. Now, there is a repair mechanism. So if at the G2 checkpoint it is found that the, the replicated DNA has damage, the um, DNA can be repaired. There are actually enzymes that can help repair the damaged DNA or the cell cycle will be stopped, will be um, halted at that point. It will not um, continue on to mitosis. The M checkpoint occurs near the end of metaphase. So mitosis has begun, and near the end of metaphase, when the sister chromatids are lining up in the middle of or at the metaphase plate, um, the cycle will not proceed until the kinetochores of each pair of sister chromatids are firmly anchored to at least two spindle fibers. And the reason for this is because we don't want something called non-disjunction to occur. Non-disjunction is the failure of the sister chromatids to separate. 
And if they don't separate, then one daughter cell is going to get too many and one daughter cell is going to get not enough. So non-disjunction can lead to the, the incorrect number of chromosomes in the daughter cells. And we have, we actually have um, diseases or disorders in humans that are caused from non-disjunction. Probably the most common one is Down syndrome. Um, I won't say a whole lot about that because we have another chapter where we're going to talk about Down syndrome. But Down syndrome occurs because there's an extra chromosome at pair number 21. So that is an example of non-disjunction. Now, there are two groups of intracellular molecules. That means these are molecules that um, reside inside cells that regulate the cell cycle. Either they are positive regulators that promote the cell cycle and cause the cell cycle to continue to the next stage, or they're negative regulators that will stop the cell cycle from moving on to the next stage. Um, this is a typo here, cyclins. Should be a C in there. Cyclins and CDKs or cyclin dependent kinases are chemicals that, um, they're proteins that their levels fluctuate in a predictable way throughout the cell cycle. And um, different signals can trigger increases in cyclin protein levels. There are different cyclins. In the G1 phase, there's a cyclin D. In the S phase, there's a cyclin E. And um, G2 phase, the level of cyclin A will increase and peak. And then in mitosis, the level of cyclin B will increase and peak. So the way that these, these are positive regulators. So the way that they work is the cyclin binds to CDK or cyclin dependent kinase. So you have a cyclin CDK um, complex. And then a protein called a kinase containing a phosphate group attaches to the cyclin CDK complex and donates that phosphate group to the cyclin CDK complex right here. Um, this is kind of like when ADP is phosphorylated to produce ATP. Substrate level phosphorylation is what this is, um, this is similar to. Substrate level phosphorylation that we learned about in chapter seven. Now, um, this, at this point, when the phosphate group is attached to the cyclin CDK complex, this triggers or activates the cyclin CDK complex. And um, that phosphate group is now attached to the target protein. And once the target protein has the phosphate group attached, once it is phosphorylated by the cyclin CDK complex, um, then it is activated and the cell cycle proceeds to the next, um, the next phase, whether that's S or G2 or M, it proceeds on to the next phase, to the next checkpoint. Now, there are three negative regulatory molecules that are pretty well understood, and there are definitely some study guide questions about these. There's one called retinoblastoma protein, or RB. There's one called P53 and one called P21. And they primarily act at the G1 checkpoint. And what will happen is if, um, if the RB, for example, if the retinoblastoma protein is phosphorylated, um, cell growth will trigger the phosphorylation of this protein. And phosphorylated RB releases E2F, which it had bound, was bound to. It releases that E2F. And that turns on gene expression and advances the cell cycle to another, um, to the next stage. But if the RB is bound to the E2F transcription factor, 
then it will not, the cell cycle will not cons continue to the next stage. So that means it's